What's going on, YouTube? Welcome to the Don't Hurt Yourself Podcast. I'm your boy, JR. Lock in one time for the one time. Today's topic is about to get a little deep. Real deep on them. Okay. So, get locked in. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Watch my other videos. It's your first time. Hello. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I am so far. Hope you are too. Now, we're going to talk about grieving. The grieving process. There is no rules to grieving. There is no rules. Yes, they, and I know they have the five steps to grief and all that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Everybody grieves differently. How do I know? Because I know. Let me tell you about my grieving process, okay? I haven't handled my grieving process very, very well. I would say I handled it ter- terribly. Terrible. I'm still grieving, and it's been... <laughs> years years to process it because you never know when you break you know what i mean so you never know when that moment comes where you just can't handle it you just can't handle it. you could you could you could fake the funk all you can you could act like you're okay you could smile one day and be head down the next day wednesday come you ready to have a good time and even when you're having a good time, it's still not a good time. You could somebody feel me out there. Holler at me in the comments if you feel me out there. Now, let me talk about me for a second. Good, I'm, I'm just going to let y'all know. I'm going to let you into my world. I'm going to let you into JR's world. Okay, me growing up, I had a beautiful life. I had two great parents who truly, truly, truly loved me. My dog's jumping in here. Here comes my dog. He hears me talking about to jump on the bed. Now, all right, Frenzy. All right, baby. There you go, Charlie Brown. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I had a great life. I couldn't have had, I couldn't, I had perfect parents. Perfect parents. My dad was great to me. My mom was great to me. Family was great to me. I was a miracle child. My mom had, I want to say, eight to ten miscarriages before she had me. My mom had me at 42 years old, so I was considered the miracle baby. You understand? So I was considered the miracle because they thought my mom could not have another child. I'm my dad's only child, his only son, and, and, and you know, and I and I'm proud of that because I know how bad that they wanted me. I grew up, did everything the right way, did everything they said. They never had to worry about me. Wasn't no goddamn criminal. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it, I did everything like a soldier, you know what I mean? My dad always told me, you do right by me, I'll do right by you. You ain't got to worry about a thing. And I, when he told me that, I stood and I stayed straight the whole time. And I did what I, I did what I had to do. And he was, and, and he was right by his word and I was right by mine. And then I got older, right? So after I graduated from high school, I moved to Oregon. And so when I moved to Oregon, it broke my dad's heart because my dad never wanted me to leave home. I was 19 years old when I left. And I moved to Oregon to go to college. And and then things started to go like slightly left. But in Oregon, I had a wonderful time. I enjoyed myself. I loved or I loved Oregon so much. Corvallis, Oregon, this small ass city. You know, it's a small town. Okay? The only thing, the best restaurant they had was a motherfucking Ruby goddamn Tuesdays. But when you went to Ruby Tuesdays, you enjoyed the shit out that motherfucker. I'll tell you right now. Yes, you did. Let me get some chicken strips. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let me, let me let me get a margarita. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep keep it coming. <laughs> okay. Especially as a college kid, it was great. My friends was there. Some of the best friends. Some of the best moments of my life from 2006 to 2009. I will cherish. To the day I die. So, as I'm up there, everything's going on fine. But my dad starts to deteriorate mentally. My dad starts to get dementia. Okay? So, and I'm like, okay. Okay. My mom says, stay up there. I will take care of this. Okay? And I'm on back and forth. So now, we're forced to put my dad in a facility because his mind's going, because he, he couldn't take care of himself. And, and nobody could take care of him 24 seven. It's like, okay, 
let's 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 do this you know but i'm my mom's like don't come home don't come home do you stay up that we, we and and but i'm still facilitating everything from oregon and home so i'm calling every day see i'm not one of them kids that and i and, and the facility used to always say this to me which i always near dear to my heart said we don't have people like you that really gives a damn that cares about their parents like you do. There's people who do not even come to see their parent at all. They don't talk to them, they don't call. I can tell you right now, because my mom and dad are both dead, okay? So I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. I have to probably say I talk to my mom and dad every single day of my life. Never a day went by. If I didn't talk to my dad at least once a day, at least once, and just to touch base and say, hey, how you doing, Pop? Hey, what's going on, Dad? Hey, what you doing? How's everything going? Okay. Because, and if I didn't call, he would cuss me out. Like, motherfucker, what the hell are you doing? Oh, you, oh, you, oh, <laughs> what you doing? Because I was a college kid. Hell, I need, the, you know, he, he gave me money to hell to fucking exist. <laughs> I remember one time I called, I called, I said, Dad, I'm low on funds, you know. <laughs> I said, he said, well, you may better buy some hot dogs. I said, what then? They hung on the phone. I'm going to say, hey, 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 hot dogs. I ain't trying to eat no damn hot dogs. <laughs> That's how good I had it. But that was just him just to test me. But you get what I'm saying. Our relationship was really close. We were tight. I mean tight. So moving on. My dad passes away. Okay. At the time, I'm going through a relationship at that time. The girl I'm dating, we're pretty much separated. You know, relationship sucks. She sucked as a human being. I won't say her name, even though I want to. Her name starts with, it's a car name. And it starts with an S, but that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. She lived in Oregon, and she lied her ass off to me. Everything she, you want to talk about a bitch. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm going through that. My dad passes away. I fly home. I'm there. I have to take care of everything. Everything. Me and my mom had to just take care of everything. And I I can remember the day verbatim because I hugged my sister. But, and I'm sitting there and I, my mom is sitting there. And my hero died. I'm going to say it again. My hero died, and I'm sitting there on the couch. My mom's sitting in the chair, and I'm not even grieving yet because I'm thinking about what do we have to do to make sure everything's okay. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about, okay, what's next? What we got to do for the funeral? What we got to do for this? What we got to do for that? How much money is it going to cost? How much of that? That's so much stress. And I was, what, 22, 23 years old? I'm in the prime of my life. I'm young. Oh, man. It's, it's, it was terrible. And I'm going to tell you what the worst thing I did. When everything was over, when that service was over, he passed away and everything. Because, what, when, okay, when people die, you have the funeral. Everybody says, oh, give my condolences. Everything's going to be all right. Stay up. Keep your head up. And you can get all the encouragement all you want to. It doesn't mean shit because when you're alone by yourself, that's when it all hits you because everybody goes home. Everybody goes home. They go home. Okay? The funeral don't last for a year. The funeral lasts for maybe an hour. You move on, eat some food, and you go home. And then you have to go home and be there with your thoughts. And that's where the, and that's when the devil comes in. And I know it, and it, it, it's and it's difficult. But I'm gonna tell you right now. When my dad passed, I handled it like a champ. I I, I handled it. I, I I mean, my mom handled it. And mind you, my mom and my dad have been divorced for almost shit twenty years. My mom and dad been divorced. My mom and divorced my dad when I was eight years old, and she still stood by my side because she loved me that much. I love her so much for that. And it, you you can't, that's better than money. Because she knew she needed me. And that, that was my, she was my best friend. 
He was my best friend. You get what I'm saying? And I, I love her to this day forever for that. Uh, but I handled it well. We handled it very well. And then years went by. So that's 2009. 2009. Okay. So time goes by. It's just now, now I moved back home because now my mom is older. You know, they had me at an old age. So now I'm forced to take care of them. I'm forced to take care of my mom. She starts to start deteriorating slowly but surely. Okay. So, <clears throat> and it's just, and then she starts to get dementia. And it's like, not again. Not again. And then, you get what I'm saying? It's like, it's like a cycle. It's like, then it starts mentally getting to me. Because, yes, I would cry over my dad, like, off and on. Like, you know, because you don't know when you're going to break. You just don't know. It could be, it could be any time. I've had moments where I have bad moments. When I'm crying my eyes out. And I have moments where I'm like, everything's all right. It's a, it's a process I don't think that doesn't go away. It doesn't just go away. It's always there. And it lingers in your heart. It is just it, like you could just see, you could look at a, a magazine and see an article like, mm hmm, that reminds me of such and such. That reminds me of so and so. You feel what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, it's something that you have to go through on your own and everybody handles it differently. Now, going back to my mother, she started getting dementia. It started really slowly. It started really slowly. Like little things, like little things. She would forget like, oh, that's right. What? Oh, okay. That's right. I'm like, and I slowly noticed it. I'm like, no, no. And then it started to get to a point where she needed me so much. She would call, she would call my name so much. You, it would, it would drive anybody crazy. Yes, it's your mother, but she would call my name just Jr. Jr. JR, JR, even though I would come back in the room, I would come in the room, come back in the room, go in the room, come back in the room, go in the room, come back in the room. And she would act like she never saw me. If I went to the store and came back, she'd be like, where you been? I was at the store. I didn't know. Then, then it gets worse than that. Then it goes from, I'm in the room and now this is my mother. That I've known my entire life. And to see her. Her mind go. To this point. Was like. It was heartbreaking for me. Okay. So. If I'm in the room. I'm JR. She sees me. And she'll look me right in my eye. And say. Not, not, not this JR. The other JR. The other JR. There is no other JR. It's just one me. It's just me and her in the house. She's looking at me, looking for the baby me. The baby JR. And the baby JR is all grown up now. I'm like, Mom, he's me. The JR you're looking for is me. No, the other one. No, the other one. That will make anybody mentally crazy. And that made the grieving process even worse. So, i uh, make a long story short. <laughs> it's not going to be short, but <laughs> when she passed away, I think I combined, I combined both my mom and dad's deaths at the time that when my mom died a year ago, my mom died three days before my birthday. My mom died April 1st, 2019, three days before my birthday. Now I break anybody. And um, <clears throat> I had it fine. My girlfriend was so worried <laughs> about when my mom died, I was broken, okay, the day. But that month, I was fairly, very calm. 
And my girlfriend says I was a little too damn calm. Like I was calm, like because I was, because I went back to my dad's death, and I suppressed it. I suppressed my dad's death. I just buried it in my heart. So when my mom died, it all came back to life. But that month, I was fine. That month of April, I was okay. I was okay. Now, May came. Okay, June came. Okay, the okay. So you got. Okay, <laughs> my mom dies on the 1st, my birthday's on the 4th, you have Easter, <laughs> June is my Father's Day, so it's like a gauntlet, it's a gauntlet, you know what I mean? Because Easter, you know, you're going back to Easter, you know, your family gets together and, you know, you, you feel what I'm saying? You know, somebody loves the Lord, hell, you holler at me, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, it's Resurrection Day. So it all is just one after another. Father's Day comes. Then July hits. And my, I, I, it all hit me. And I cried. I want to say every single day of July of last year. I want to say every day. It just, it just broke me. I'm like, they both gone. I'm all alone. There's nobody else here. What am I supposed to do? Yes, I'm grown. But you got to understand, these are people who have been in my life forever. Okay, they birthed me. I'm, I'm, I'm them. They are me. <laughs> what do you expect? And it shattered me. And then July, August, September, Jesus, October. I would say, from then on, it's been a battle, man. Even to this day. I push friends away. I push family away. It's an up and down thing, man. Because, you know, and the people want to tell you, just oh, just get over it. Just get over it. You go through it. You go through it. And then you tell me your story, how you went through it. You could pray about it. You could do everything you can. Ain't nobody perfect and ain't nobody trying to be. But come on. It's like and, and people just don't understand. If they have not been through it, they do not know. It's a motherfucker. It's a motherfucker. Because there's people in your life that you really love and care and you just can't believe they gone. There is no rules. There is no rules. There's no method to the madness. Some days, like, I'll go back. Some days are going to be good. Some days are going to be bad. You got to have somebody in your corner, though, that understands that, you know, you got to take the bitter with the sweet. You got to take the bitter with the sweet. Yes, everybody is not that damn strong. Yeah, your mama died, and you just like, all right, everything's all right. Hey, there's all right. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to tell you right now, that person that damn crazy. That motherfucker's a goddamn maniac. Okay, because ain't nobody, ain't nobody that goddamn happy. If somebody loses their child, somebody loses their grandmother, somebody loses their they aunt, they lose a, a, a cousin that they love, uh, their father, their mother, a, love, a, a, a husband, a wife, and you just want them to just get over it? It doesn't work that way. You may never get over it. You may never get over it. Because I know I'm not over it. My dad died 10 years ago. I'm still not over it. My mom died a year and a half ago. I'm still not over it. I may never get over it. You get what I'm saying? It's a... It's a battle. It's a battle for some people. It's a battle. That... You know... You, you got to just push through it. You got to push through it. I know I need to push through it. You ain't got to tell me to push through. I know what I need to do. So you got to, it's a, it's a mental thing. And, and, and the devil wants to fucking just take you out and wants to keep that in your head. And you want to find that happiness again. You can be happy and still be sad at the same time. Yes, you can. 
You can. Yes, you can. You can be happy seven days a week and still miss that person that you love the most. You can. You can still miss them. You can miss them, but in a constructive way. And that's what I've learned. Yes, I miss my mom every day. I miss my dad every day. My whole family, I'm at, my mom's gone, my dad's gone, my grandmother's gone on both sides. I have not that much family on my mother's side. Like we're losing everybody. It's like a, I don't know. It's like, it's just crazy to me. So that's why I always feel alone. Back when I was born so late, I always, I always, <laughs> I always joked that my mom she had me. She should have had me back in like 1975 or 196, like 1970. You know, so I could have been around when Michael Jackson really was popping. You know, so I could have had my thriller jacket on and and going and going to thriller, <laughs> going to uh, Michael Jackson concerts. But I was born in '86, so I didn't. I, didn't, I was I, I was late in the game, <laughs> but. You know, it's just a crazy world, man. It's a crazy, especially with now with COVID. It's like everybody's in the house and everybody can't go nowhere, can't do nothing. So you're stuck in the house once again with your own thoughts. And I just want to come to you guys. And I know maybe I'm helping. Maybe I'm I'm venting for me because I need to talk about this, get this off my chest. It's something I've always wanted to talk about because it's just not easy. It's just not that easy for you to people to say, you know, you'll be all right. No, no, no. Your mama 45, she ain't going nowhere. Your dad 46, she's not going nowhere. Now, talk to me when they get 75 and they forget your name. You get what I'm saying? Then come talk to me and if you handle it that well. Does it make you feel good? Yes, being somebody's caregiver. Yes, one thing I can always say, I can always about, I took care of my mom and dad the way they took care. Hey, they took care of me. They loved me so much when I was born to the to the day they died, and I took care of them the same way they took care of me with all the love in the world. I gave everything. I gave up. I want to say a whole decade of my life for my mom, and I gave up. Yeah. Just to make sure she was okay. Just to make sure she was okay. It's crazy, man. I just want to say one thing to you guys. I, like, I don't know if I'm helping anybody. I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be. I, I know. I just said. I know. I just said. You know, it's gonna be all right. You gotta take the bitter with the sweet. We'll push through. You gotta push through. We all gonna push through. We all may have somebody we miss, somebody we love so much, so dearly, that we wish that was walking this earth right now, that we could talk to, shoot the shit with, watch a game with, drink a beer with, drink some wine with. Because my mom is my, my wine buddy. We have a little blush wine and have a good old time. You hear me? Put some lifetime on, shoot the shit. I can put the Cowboys game on. You know, she's from Texas. I'm a diehard Cowboy fan, so is she. And we would drink some wine and sit back and laugh. We would play some music. That was my girl, man. And I, I miss her to this day. And I know y'all have somebody in y'all lives that y'all feel the same way about. Y'all feel the same way about. And, you know, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. And they wouldn't want you to be sitting here crying. And they know, we know that. They want you sitting around crying and feeling sorry for yourself. And feeling sad and being angry because that's something that anger is one thing I have to work on. You know, everybody has a flaw because I get angry at everybody because, you know, it's an anger. I know it's an anger stage, you know, rage is like, you know, and I think everybody that's grieving that somebody they love, they need a little therapy. I know I need some. I need a little bit. I do. To talk to somebody, somebody that's unbiased. We all do. We all do. Somebody you can talk to to get all your thoughts and feelings out. And this is my way. This is my therapy right now. 
This is my therapy right now, talking to you guys about this, getting this off of my chest. But you know what? Like I said, got it. We'll push through. Push through. And at the end of the day, we'll win. We'll win. And you don't know when you're, it's not when it's, it's, when it's over it, because you'll never get over it. But you'll be, you can handle it. It's not over it, handling it. You feel what I'm saying? Can you handle it? You know what I mean? When you see that picture, when you stumble on that, when you stumble up on a a a a, 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 a clip or, or a saying that your mom or your cousin used to say, your grandma used to say, uh, a brother used to say, a sister used to say, and you could just look at it and smile and laugh without shedding a tear, that's God telling you, you're getting better. You're getting better. It's a daily process. It's a process. Trust the process. I hope I helped somebody today. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Comment in the comment section uh, what you feel about grieving. Who you miss. Tell them you love them. This is your boy JR. I'll talk to y'all later. Many more videos to come. Way more upbeat. This is the Don't Hurt Yourself Podcast. I will holler at y'all later. Peace.